Precalculus 2, Module 1, Section 8.1, Angles and Their Measures, Part 1. First we'll go over some basic terminology. Two distinct points A and B determine the line AB. Portion of the line including the points AB is what we call the line segment between A and B. The portion of the line that starts at A and continues through B is called ray AB. An angle is formed by rotating a ray, which we would call the initial side, around its end point, the vertex, to a terminal side. Here's an example of a positive angle created by rotating the ray CA, the initial side, around its vertex C to the terminal side, which gives us ray CB. Here's an example of a negative angle we've rotated the other way. Degree measure was developed by the Babylonians around 4,000 years ago. It divided the circumference of the circle into 360 parts. One possible reason for this is because there are approximately that number of days in a year. There are 360 degrees in one rotation. An acute angle is an angle between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. There's our angle theta. This would be an example of an acute angle. A right angle is an angle that is exactly 90 degrees. Often we denote it with a box to indicate the exact 90 degree angle here. An obtuse angle is an angle that is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. And a straight angle is an angle that is exactly 180 degrees. We have two relationships of angles. The first is complementary angles. The sum of the measures of two positive angles is 90 degrees. And then supplementary angles, the sum of the measures of our two positive angles is 180 degrees. Now let's look at an example. We want to find the measure of each angle in the given figures. In this figure we have two angles that sum to 90 degrees, as indicated by our right angle box here. So we want to add the angles 2y plus 4y equals 90 degrees. So 6y is 90 degrees. We'll divide both by 6 and end up with y being equal to 15 degrees. So our first angle is 2 times 15 or 30 degrees and our second angle is 4 times 15 or 60 degrees. Next we have two angles that are supplementary. They add to be 180. So we want to add them up and set them equal to 180 degrees. When we combine like terms we have 17m plus 10 equals 180 degrees. We solve this equation. 17m equals 170 degrees. So m is equal to 10 degrees. We plug that into each of the our equations here to find what each individual angle is. And we get 107 degrees and 73 degrees. And we see those add up to be 180 degrees. Now let's look at degrees, minutes, and seconds. One minute, written one with a dash, is one sixtieth of a degree, 
or 60 minutes is 1 degree. 1 second, written 1 with 2 dashes, is 1 60th of a minute, which is 1 36 hundredth of a degree, or 60 seconds is 1 minute. So the following is 15 degrees, 23 minutes, 12 seconds. Let's calculate with degrees and minutes. We want to add 63 degrees, 15 minutes, and 18 degrees, 52 minutes. We can add them vertically, and we see we will get 81 degrees 67 minutes. But this is actually equal to 81 degrees and then 1 degree 7 minutes which is 82 degrees 7 minutes because 67 minutes is 1 degree plus 7 minutes. Now let's subtract. Let's convert 90 degrees. It becomes 89 degrees 60 minutes which is equivalent to 90 degrees and we want to subtract 26 degrees 33 minutes. So when we do the subtraction, we get 63 degrees, 27 minutes. Now I do want to show you a little bit on the calculator with this. We want to add 63 degrees, so we press second and our apps button, which takes us into our angle menu, and we see that number one is our degree symbol, and then 15 minutes, so we do second, apps again, and number two is our minute symbol, plus 18 degrees, 52 minutes. We see we get a measure in decimals, but if we want to convert it to degrees, minutes, and seconds, we just press second apps, and C number four means convert to degrees, minutes, seconds. So we press four, it's gonna take our answer and convert it for us, and we'll get 87 degrees, seven minutes, and zero seconds. So we don't even need to include the zero. Excuse me, 82 degrees, seven minutes. So let's convert between decimal degrees and degrees, minutes, and seconds by hand. We want to round to the nearest thousandth of a degree. So we want to convert 34 degrees, 51 minutes, 35 seconds. So this is equivalent to 34 degrees plus 51 over 60 degrees plus 35 over 3600 degrees since minutes is 1 60th of a degree and seconds is 1 hundredth of a degree. When we do these on the calculator, we have 34 degrees plus 0.85 degrees plus 0 0.0097 degrees. And when we add those up, we get approximately 34.8597 degrees or 34.860 degrees when we round. Now let's convert the other way. We want to convert from decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, and seconds. So we have 102.3771 degrees that will be 102 degrees plus 0 0.3771 degrees. That's equivalent to 102 plus 0 0.3771 times 60 minutes. 
And we can do this since we know that one degree is equal to 60 minutes. So we have 102 degrees plus 22.626 minutes. We do essentially the same thing with our decimal part of our minutes here. So we end up with 22 minutes plus 0.626 minutes. And we'll multiply our decimal part by 60 seconds since we know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. And we end up with 102 degrees plus 22 minutes plus 37.56 seconds. So our answer here would be 102 degrees, 22 minutes, 37.56 seconds. Or if we round, we could use 38 seconds here. Now let's look at how easy this would have been to do on our calculator. We type in 102.3771. We press second apps number four and hit enter. And we see that it converts it for us. You're welcome to use either method. Now let's look at angles in standard position. We say an angle is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin and its initial side lies along the positive x-axis, so, like so. The first angle we look at is in quadrant 1 and it's an acute angle. The second one ends in quadrant 2, or its terminal side is in quadrant 2, and it's an obtuse angle. We also have what we call quadrantal angles. Quadrantal angles are angles in standard position with terminal sides along the x or y axis. Examples are 90, 180, 270 degrees, etc. And we see the following breakdown of our quadrantal angles. Now let's look at what we call coterminal angles. A complete rotation of a ray results in an angle measuring 360 degrees. By continuing the rotation, angles of measure larger than 360 degrees can be produced. These are called coterminal angles. They're angles that have the same initial side and the same terminal side, but different amounts of rotation. Their measures differ by a multiple of 360. So here's an example. Our first angle is 60 degrees. Our second angle in red is 420. They have the same initial side and same terminal side, but different measures of rotation. And here's another example of the same. Now let's find the angles of smallest possible positive measure coterminal with each angle. Our first angle is 1318 degrees. First thing we need to do is find out how many times 360 will go into this. It turns out that it goes in three times. So we have 1318 minus 3 times 360 degrees. Or 1318 minus 1080 degrees. And we end up with 238 degrees. You're welcome also to take your angle and just subtract 360 until you get to the smallest positive. You'll notice if we do this on the calculator and we take 1318 and we subtract 360 from it and continue to do the same thing, We subtract it three times. If we subtract it one more time, we end up with a negative angle. And we're specifically asking for the smallest possible positive measure that's coterminal. So all the angles along the way were coterminal, but the one we wanted was 238 degrees. Now let's look at what we do with a negative angle. Notice in part A, we subtracted 360 degrees. 
With a negative angle, we're going to add 360 degrees until we get to our smallest possible positive measure. So we only have to add it once in this case, and we get 262 degrees as our answer here. Now let's give an expression that generates all angles coterminal with each angle. Remember that coterminal angles differ by a multiple of 360 degrees. So for 55 degrees, we want to add n times 360 degrees, meaning every time we add 360 degrees, we'll get another coterminal angle. The same relationship holds true with negative angles. We're simply adding 360 degrees each time to get a new coterminal angle. So we add n times 360 degrees as we did in part a, where n is an integer from 1 to infinity. We've looked at degree measure, now let's look at radian measure. An angle with its vertex at the center of a circle that intercepts an arc on the circle equal in length to the radius of our circle has a measure of one radian. An angle of measure two radians intercepts an arc equal in length to twice the radius of our circle. And here's our picture that gives a visualization. We see that our angle here intercepts an arc on our circle that's measure r, which is the measure of the radius of our circle. So theta equals one radian. The radian is a real number where the degree is a unit of measurement. The circumference of a circle given by c equals two pi r, r being the radius of the circle, shows that an angle of 360 degrees has a measure of two pi radians. Which essentially means if we were to divide both by two, we get our next relationship that 180 degrees equals pi radians. Do the same again and you'll see that 90 degrees is pi over two radians. Now let's convert between degrees and radians. We'll start with our middle relationship from the previous slide, that 180 degrees equals pi radians. First, we can divide both sides by 180 and we see that we get one degree equaling pi over 180 radians. Or we could divide both sides by pi and we see that we get 180 degrees over pi equals one radian. So in order to convert degrees to radians, we multiply the degree measure by pi over 180 and simplify. To convert from radians to degrees, we multiply a radian measure by 180 over pi and simplify. Let's look at some examples. We want to convert between degrees and radians. For our first one, we have 60 degrees, so we want to multiply by pi over 180. Always remember that the measure that you're wanting to eliminate, which in this case is degrees, will go in the bottom so that they'll cancel. So that, that, was, that way we know we use pi over 180. So as we cancel, 60 goes into 180 three times and we end up with pi over three radians. Seventy four degrees we're going to multiply by pi over 180 and we end up with 37 pi over 90 or 1.29 radians. Radians can also be given as a decimal. Now let's convert when we have degrees and minutes. We can convert minutes to degrees simply by dividing it by 60 minutes. So we have 174 plus 50 over 60 degrees, which gives us 174.83 degrees. 
then we multiply by pi over 180 to give us approximately 3.05 radians. We can do some of this on the calculator. I'll show just the first example. When converting to radians, we take 60 and we're multiplying it by pi over 180. But in this case, let's leave pi out of the equation and just do 1 over 180. This will give us our decimal form, which we convert to a fraction, pressing math and entering twice. So we get one third. We see if we multiply that by pi, we end up with pi over 3. The same can be done with all of the rest of our examples. Now let's convert from radians to degrees. We have 2 pi over 3 that we want to multiply by 180 degrees over pi. Remembering that pi is what we want to cancel out, so it needs to go in the denominator of our relationship here. 3 goes into 180, 60 times, so we have 2 times 60, or 120 degrees. We do the same thing with 4.25. We want to multiply by 180 over pi, and we see that we get 243 point five degrees or if we convert that to degrees in minutes depending on how your answer is asked it's 243 degrees 30 minutes here we have a table with equivalent angle measures in degrees and radians exactly and approximately Notice that when you're doing your homework, if they ask for the exact answer, they're asking it for to be in the form with pi. If they want approximate, they'll tell you how many decimal places to round to.